We are live here. Welcome to Speak Now Pro Wrestling. It's your girl, Denise Salcedo, and joined here today to talk WWE SmackDown, the March 29th edition. I got my friend, Righteous Reg. What's up, Reg? What's up, Denise? I'm very happy to be here. SmackDown Friday night, WrestleMania season. It's almost time to get to Philadelphia, Denise. I'm very excited. Thanks for having me. Appreciate everybody here supporting on a Friday night, Denise. You know, they don't have to be here. How are you today, Denise? As always, super busy, I'm sure. Honestly, a little bit hectic because I was telling you off air that during the show, so during the show, I take notes for the podcast. Yep. I prepare stuff for the podcast. I make a new thumbnail. I change whatever needs to be changed for the thing. I live tweet and then I live Facebook. I don't know how, I don't know what you call that, but I live everything. <laughs> and then on top of that, what I started doing today was I also, I also started filming reactions. Not only that, I was editing the reactions during the commercial breaks and posting those up so today was a little bit extra on top of everything but it was a fun show with an ending that i can't wait to talk about very exciting ending there was some good wrestling on this show denise a uh, very focused wrestling show everybody knows this wrestlemania season the angles and everything presented shows that it's wrestlemania season pretty exciting it definitely is. And of course, next week, as Righteous Reg mentioned, we are getting into the WrestleMania week. And there is so much that is going to be happening. Of course, wow. um, tons of podcasts here. But on Thursday is when I fly out to WrestleMania week. And um, I'm going to basically be everywhere that I possibly can be. And the places I can't be, Reg is going to be helping me out and also getting some content for the channel. Uh, bless your soul, Reg, because I have been very stressed out about that. <laughs> um, these are the weeks where I wish I could clone myself, but Reg just got my back on that. So I'm really excited. Amen. There's going to be lots of content coming to the channel. Uh, when do you fly out, Reg? Um, I'm going to be there Thursday, too, and I get right into wrestling. Denise, when I get to WrestleMania weekend, if people don't know, I watch so much wrestling, it's ridiculous. If there's a wrestling show happening at 3 a.m., I'm there to see it. It's the best time of the year for a wrestling fan. It's wrestling vacation for me. Well, it used to be. Now it's like work. Not even your thing. Just like, you know, us, like media people and networking and just being in attendance. It's so much more than just going to the wrestling show. So I'm really excited about it. You got to be on, man, 24-7. Every moment of the day. If you're just walking down the street, somebody's like, hey, blah, blah, blah. It's like you never know what anybody could be <laughs> or anything could be. It's exciting. These are my favorite weekends. These are the weekends when I come out and I come back and I'm like, twitching. <laughs> I come back and I'm like, what day is it? I don't know. <laughs> Literally. Can't wait. It's the best time afterwards. I'm like, damn, I hate wrestling. So for like two days, I don't watch wrestling and then I'm back at it. It's ridiculous. God, I don't think I have like a break. I haven't had a wrestling break since a while, but it's okay. It's all right. Cause I don't, I like to keep up with everything, but let's right. get into some of these super chats. Of course, in case you missed it right at the top of our stream, we had a Thank you, Sheldon Banner, because Sheldon. Um, you've been sending so many memberships to the channel. As a matter of fact here, uh, he says it's actually the 52nd week in a row that he has given <sighs> DWO memberships. And he says, everyone, happy Friday. There it is. Officially 52 straight streams of the gifted membership. I forgot the last two streams in 2023. You did, which I give to DWO memberships and every show you've done in 2024. Sheldon, I um, I wish I, I was like, I, I need to give you more than like a thank you banner. But like, you know how much this means to me. And I really want to thank you for your support all the freaking time. I know I say I know I say it all the time. But each time I say it, I truly mean it, though. Yeah, I haven't been on a stream with you, Denise, where Sheldon hasn't donated five memberships. So shout out to Sheldon. Don't know how amazing that is to consistently do that. Doesn't have to do that. Just great support. So, uh, again, shout out to Sheldon Jackson for always being a great support for all of Denise's streams and when I'm here, too. Yeah, seriously. Thank you so freaking much. We got Tim Leonard, Jr., who's been a DWL member for 11 months, who says at SmackDown, so much fun. The, the booze for Dom. Wow. It's always a good time when you get to boo Dominic Mysterio. We got Tunde Uad, who says, if the men have the Andre the Battle, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, when will the women have theirs at WrestleMania? And what female's wrestler's name would they use? I was thinking China. I would love it if it was China, but the fact that they haven't like even put her in the Hall of Fame makes me like wonder if that's something that they would do. 
did they do something? I don't know if I erased this from my brain. Didn't they like announce a like fabulous moolah, blah, blah, blah. Then there was backlash and they changed it to maybe the May Young. Am I? No, not the May Young. Been- because they had the Mae Young Classic. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they I, did have something with the fabulous Moolah. And then something happened. And then there was a bit. Everybody was like. Didn't take, they? They pulled right. sponsors from it. But I don't remember what it was. It might have been a battle royal or something. Uh, that's kind of. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. But they need to do something again where they have just all the women. Or all everybody represented that doesn't get a shot to be on the show. Exactly. We got Jana here who says this episode was great to me. It clearly focused on all the other storylines that desperately needed it since being overshadowed by the main events. Saw some complaining that the Rock Roman weren't there. Well, um, you know, it is one of those things where it's come up. It's. You know, it's it's difficult to say because when you go to the shows, right, you definitely want to see the Rock and Roman Reigns because they're big stars. And we've kind of been getting spoiled the last couple of weeks in seeing both of them at the show, particularly SmackDown. So I can imagine that the people at the show would definitely want it. However, I thought they did a good enough job on today's show to make it feel like it didn't feel like anything was missing. Like even though the Rock and Roman weren't on, I didn't come out feeling like, oh, that show sucked or was missing star power. I didn't feel that way. Yeah, agreed, Denise, because I didn't even really think about it until the super chat here. It's like, oh, yeah, they weren't really on the show because they had them represented in video packages and things like that. I think that WWE did a good thing earlier this year where they were like, The Rock's going to be specifically at these shows. So, you know, getting people's hopes up or getting people in that him showing up randomly on Monday probably got people's hopes up, too. But, you know, you can't win them all. Yeah, that's true. But it's it's that thing, though. I feel like every time you go to shows because you're there, it's the thing of like, I'm special. I'm here. Something yeah. great is going to happen. That's how people feel when they're at live events, right? Totally. You always want it to be like someone talking about like, oh, I was there. You can some moment gonna, that's going to live forever in infamy. And you're just like, oh, I was there for that. So anytime The Rock shows up these last couple months it's been a moment like that so you want to be a part of something like that i mean the people that were there monday are going to remember what he did forever you know oh yes they are thank you so much Jana, for the super chat we got dream ninja 77 who says jade whip that arse what an <laughs> epic entrance we'll get into that in a second we got ice t he 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 who says good smackdown they launched jade card gill almost perfectly i can't help but think that the rock literally stole jade storm cargill's Jade Storm's Cargill's Thunder with his intro, it would have been perfect for her. Did you make that correlation? Not until just now. Ice T he he. Listen, that would have been amazing for Jade. And I can see Dwayne being like, let's see Jade's intro. Oh, I like that lightning. Let me get that. Let me get that for mine. Like, I mean, it's not the craziest thing, Denise. It's not the craziest thing. Yeah, you're right. I didn't I hope not. This. I didn't think about that, honestly. It, it wasn't something that I really thought of. I mean, The Rock's going to be gone. Like, he could, you know, just gift it to Jade when he goes and does his next Fast and Furious 12. He could pass it to her and be like, Doom. This is yours. <laughs> <laughs> and they get a little effect. Those little those little 3D effects that they do. <laughs> and he passes it to her and she gets it. <laughs> All right, this is turning into a superhero movie right now. <laughs> she is kind of like a superhero, Denise. She looks uh, like she kind of She totally is. Yeah. We got Matt Logan here who says, is Reg this a, okay, Reg, is this a regular gig on Fridays? No. (laughs) I'm trying to get WrestleMania money, you guys, and this is it. Hey, guys, Reg is hard to, hard to, how is it, hard to get, hard to book? Hard to, I don't know, hard to kill. Uh, Shout out to TNA Impact Wrestling. They're very cool. Now, Friday nights are very difficult, you guys, and just sitting down and watching SmackDown. Because Reg is a single man, guys. Just say it, Reg. Friday nights is the day that you go find out whether or not you're going to be clapping cheeks or not. Whoa, Denise, (laughs) hold on a minute. You went like zero to 100 really quick. Reg, I'm not dumb. I understand what a young single man does on a Friday night, all right? Listen, Friday's busy. They That's when they want to hang out, Denise. They're like, yo, what's up on Friday? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can't. I'm going to be reviewing SmackDown. They're like, what's fucking SmackDown? But yeah, Nerd. Denise. Pal- <laughs> exactly. Dork. <laughs> oh, you don't want to come over? You want to watch some guys slam each other? Yeah, sorry, lady. <laughs> That's the real reason, Reg. Just throw it out there for everyone to know. It is what it is. Put all my business on the street, Denise. Thanks. <laughs> Jay Stone says, kind of bummed Bianca isn't a singles, isn't any singles WrestleMania match. But damn, Bianca, Tr- Trinity, and Jade, uh, they, the big three, like they started the league. Reg will get it. 
No, yeah, I Denise, get it. I get it. There, we're going to get into it. There was a lot of emotions because, like, I'm kind of on the same thing as I wanted Bianca to be in a singles match. But seeing the three of them at the end of the show was like, man, do anything you want. I don't care. We could have it. Just like, as long as y'all are together, I'm in. Jason X Cross sends in a generous super chat saying Jade is going to be a big effing deal. Totally. I completely agree with that. John Black says damage control looked like they saw a ghost of a little boy in the stock room. <laughs> Oh, wait, that was me. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, Remember that little fast guy? <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Never it forget. took me a second. My bad. Dream Ninja 77 says Dom called wild a non-Latino. <laughs> yeah, we're throwing shots. Big shots. I was like, whoa, we're, set, we're, we're, we're doing that. Is that the first time they've ever mentioned that, Denise? I think that's the first time. Whew. I think it's the first time. Will Chisholm says that ending shot of Jade, Bianca, and Naomi. I know it would be good, but I didn't think it looked so gangsta. Print t-shirts, uh, make a billboard, make a movie, just all of it. We want it. Uh, Jared, who's been a member for five months, says WWE doing black girls versus Asian, Asian girls at WrestleMania. I didn't even think of that until right now. No comment. Lori's Johnson, thank you so much for becoming a uh, brand new member of the DWO. We got Lab Gloss here who says, oh, he gifted five DWO memberships. Hell yeah, man. Let's thank go. you so much, dude. I appreciate that. Um, okay, I'm trying to get all caught up and then we'll get right into things. Ryan Lambert says, Reg going after them hoochie Cheryl's in the bay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but hoochie Cheryl's. I'll just line them up. Lab Gloss says Kyrie jumping on Jade like she's a store manager. Oh she my did. God. <laughs> I need to stop. All right, let's get into this Jade Cargill stuff, man, because this was the biggest thing that happened on the show, and we need to get right to it. So as they had promoted last week that Jade Cargill is officially a SmackDown member, and she would be making her official SmackDown superstar roster debut. It's kind of complicated because she's appeared on SmackDown, but this was her official debut as a SmackDown superstar. So that's why it's a little wordy. But anyways, so Nick Aldis introduces her. And she comes out in this like red leather two piece, this like turtleneck with the boobs really nicely emphasized. And then the, 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 the thing, the thing, the, the bottoms and the tight, tight red boots. I went blind flawless. for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't see. Wait, what's wrong with my eyes? Why are they doing this? <laughs> Um, I can only imagine how you must have felt, Red, but <laughs> she came out and she cut this promo and she basically said that it was about time that she was there and she put over the WWE women's roster and basically said, but they are not me. I am the headline. The storm is here. And that was basically it. And she did her, you know, her, her little pose mm -hmm. and that was the end of the first part. So let's focus on that first and foremost, how you thought, what you thought about the promo and how she looked and all of that. Presentation, Denise, like I said, my eyes stopped working. One went that way, one <laughs> went the other way. I didn't know. I was like, yo, what's going Like my eyes are going. You know that scene in Step Brothers where Will Ferrell sings and then afterwards, John C. Raleigh's like, I can't even look at you right now. That's what it is seeing Jade Cargill. She looks but not like, it's like there's wrestlers and then there's Jade Cargill. There's superstar movie people and then there's Jade Cargill. Like she's on a different level. Like the presentation was great. The theme, just everything about it. I will admit, Denise, I'm glad I let it play out because after this little bit, she came out. She looked great. She called out the SmackDown women's locker room and she was like, none of them are me. And then that was it. I was like, that's it. I almost tweeted like, that's it. L I let it play out, though, because I didn't want to judge. I was like, there has to be something more. And later in the show, there was something more. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. Even let, let's just say the second part hadn't happened. I was pretty satisfied with the beginning. And the only reason I was satisfied with that was because I thought they kept it like simple and straight to the point. The point was she came out and they were clearly 
wanting everyone to see her physique and how flawless she is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. They made a point that she is someone to look at. Um, the other thing that they did was now she's like the headline. I think she needs to run with that, man. If she's not running with it already, I'm assuming she is. But she gave herself a little nickname. She's got the storm thing. So that's a little catchphrase there. So I felt like she came out and she checked all the boxes of what you need for a WWE superstar. I was like, look, check. Nickname, check. Catchphrase, check. You know what I mean? Totally. The only reason I wouldn't wouldn't have been satisfied, Denise, is just because I wanted her to have a WrestleMania match or something attached to WrestleMania. And the ending made it feel like there was going to be something. If they came out in another week, they were just like, oh, she's here and we don't announce anything for her. I would have been like, yo, what's going on here? But they made up for it. Yeah, especially because they waited so long. So here's exactly. the thing. Like, we had only seen her in, in the Rumble. And I thought the Rumble, they did phenomenal stuff with her. I thought she looked great. And I feel like this promo, again, I don't know. I was very excited. The storm has arrived. I'm looking forward to it. I, she just looked like a – I don't even know how to say it. I like If I would have been eating during this, I sadly would have been like, <laughs> oh, man, no more. I ain't eating that cookie no more. Because, damn, she looked really good. Like, it, I That's feel like everybody – she not Every moment of the day she's working out, Denise, like right now she left the ring and just started working out because like, how do you look like that? That's the thing, though. Honestly, it's people like that that I feel it's just natural. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know what she does. I don't know about like fitness and nutrition and that type of stuff. She's an I athlete. Just, right. She's an athlete. It's just it, there's some people that just it's genetics, Reg. Some people yeah. can look like that. And, you know, some of us you get can't. to look at people that look like that. Luckily for us. Yeah, that's true. I mean, honestly, 10 out of 10. That's it. That's all yeah, I was, I was like looking. Actually, I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna bring this picture up because I was looking at her, uh, her arms. And I'm just going to say this right now. It doesn't matter if you are a man or a freaking woman. Everybody, a a horse. everybody would want to have arms, guns like these. Like, come on, Denise, look at this. Like, again, my eyes are burning again. Just look. I'm like, yo, I'm like, why are my, I, how come my eyes keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Be strong, Reg. You can make it. Be strong. Okay. Like, just give her all the championships. She's the best. She won. So following all of this, you've, we've, a lot of people thought that was it. Reg, you thought that was it. Fast forward to the ending of this match. I mean, the ending of the show, excuse me. Bianca Belair goes one-on-one -on -one with Dakota Kai. And this was great stuff. We're going to have to kind of intertwine these stories here because in the back we had a uh, skit that was shown where Bailey attacked EO after a promo, which was really freaking cool. We'll talk more about that in a second. But we in the actual match between Bianca and Dakota Kai, they were having a pretty like good match. Bianca ended up winning and then she gets jumped by damage control. Naomi comes out to help her out, but it's still not enough. She's outnumbered and they let a lot of time go by. And I'm thinking, is Bailey going to come out? Like, is this the moment where they kind of become friends? Like, I was thinking, because, you know, Bianca doesn't really care for Bailey. Right. I was thinking that Bailey was going to come out and be like, see, I am a good girl. Like, you should be trusting me or whatever, right? I wasn't expecting Jade, even though we have discussed in the past the possibility of Jade being in this spot. And even so, I still wasn't expecting her to come out. So when she did, I thought, oh, hell yeah, let's freaking go. <laughs> so she goes in there. She freaking pump kicks Asuka. She freaking um, takes down, who was it? I think it was, um, yeah, it was Kyrie Sane. No, it was EO. And then Kyrie Sane was the one that jumped on her back. And then she took her out afterwards. She took out everybody from damage control. And afterwards, we get this really great shot where you see Trinity, Bianca, as well as Jade. All three of them standing there in the ring with the big WrestleMania sign on the back. And then the damage control girls on the outside. So it's looking like they definitely are doing that three on three yes tremendous stuff like i said after the promo earlier or after the signing earlier it's like oh, i don't know maybe that's not enough when they start beating down naomi and bianca the crowd started chanting for jade a little bit so i was like this is a possibility if happened and this is probably the best position for her to run in so when she came in again she switched her outfit denise looked amazing again as something different but she just looked like a big giant superstar like what's she going to do when she get in here? So she gets in here, and that pop-up powerbomb that she hit, 
Oh my God. Crazy. She hit the jaded, like everything. She looked like I'm here to destroy. I'm here to look great. And that last shot of the three of them, like I said, put it on a t-shirt. This is a million dollar group. Phenomenal. If Bianca's not going to be able to continue her streak of amazing one-on-one -on -one matches, this is the next, next best case scenario, especially teaming up with Naomi. This is all just really dope to me and who they're going against are some of the best wrestlers in the world. So this is going to be a great match. Do you think they're getting like a group name? What would the group name be? Mm, that's we're getting too far in the weeds for that. Like Jade's not going to want a group name. She don't play I want that. a group name. Mm -mm. Why not? Jade, I mean, I think, not gonna gonna be, like that. I think this is going to be a thing for a bit though. It's not, not for Jade. She don't play like that. I think it might be for a second. How many seconds, Denise? I don't Destiny know. What do you child. think at this? <laughs> Wait, someone said Destiny's child? In the chat, y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Beyonce? Uh, I would probably have to say Bianca because she's done more. But the leader, though, the leader feels like it's Jade. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. But and more then, accomplished and then than Bianca. Naomi, Naomi's Kelly Rowland. Yeah, you're right. I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll go with that. All right, all right. Okay. <laughs> see, I told you. What's wrong with giving them a name? <laughs> I, I don't want see... you to have a name. Jade is an individual. Like she's gonna say next week, I don't like y'all at all, but I'm just here to help. Like well, you'll see it. I don't know. I have a feeling. Well, this could go multiple ways, right? This could yeah. go in a because I think that they should all be a faction. But yeah. also do like their own thing. Because here's the thing, right? Like with Bianca, for example, let's talk about Bianca for a second. People have been wanting to see something different from her. People have been yeah. wanting to see her as a heel and all of these things, right? But she's still just Bianca, the Bianca that we know. So with that being said, they're going to have to change things up for a little bit so that people don't get bored. Yeah, I guess coming off the ends of whatever they're going to do at WrestleMania, they're going to need to kind of establish some things with all three of these women. And this might be a good way. That's what I'm saying. If they're going to try to do like a trios group and they're doing matches like that now, nah, but if they're a crew and they're doing singles things, then yeah, I'm in for that. It could be a thing where it's like, oh yeah, we all get together and fight other girls. But when it comes down to it, like when they have their singles matches, the other girls are there having their back. Black girls rock. Black women unite. I'm, I'm with you, Denise. Now I'm all in. I'm with or, it. Or what if they do like a thing where, uh, or what if they do a situation where Jade is getting all of the attention, right? She becomes the Beyonce of the group. Denise is in the booker mode. <laughs> Bianca is like, oh, hell no. You know, like this, I've been here for, like, I've been doing all of these things. And then there starts to be this, like, jealousy. But this could be down the line, you know? Yeah, no, this is, you got it, Denise. I, I wasn't in at first, but now I'm all in. This is leading to Bianca and Jade showdown. Who's the real Beyonce? Million dollar they idea. They can push this all the way till next WrestleMania. They can do a whole thing this whole year where they start off as trios. See, Maybe the they issue is, is there is a tag team. There then is a Bianca and Rhea showdown at oh, WrestleMania. Yeah. That I has that. to yeah, happen. Right. I don't know when it is, Denise, but it has to happen. All right. Well, then screw my idea. Yeah, because I do want to see that Bianca Rhea match. But uh, Rhea and Jade also see there's so many matchups that are going to come out of this. We have a lot of time. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm excited, man. Honestly, the visual of all three of them just standing there all looking like superheroes was very, very exciting. Phenomenal. Um. All right. Let's get into the rest of these <laughs> super chats in here. And let's see what people are saying. This is from Steven Marchuli, who says, my God, someday Jade versus Tiffany, please. Well, I might as well mention that right now because we did get a video package of Tiffany Stratton. And we've been talking a whole lot about Tiffany, right? Because it's Tiffy time all the time. We're always wanting to talk about her. But here's the thing. We haven't seen her the last two weeks. And the last time that you and I were talking about her, we were talking about how people like even though she's supposed to be a heel because she's so good and people are so interested in her it's almost like they're turning her baby face because of the cheers that she's getting and i noticed that ever since she went to the main roster they really weren't showing her nxt character her nxt character 
was more so of what we saw today. So today they did one of those video packages where she comes out and she's talking about how perfect she is and how, you know, everything she does is perfect. She talks about her white teeth, her, her, her hair, her skin, her fashion, her being a gymnast, literally everything. And then she even trashes some of the other people calling them ugly. And all of that is heel stuff. So I feel like they did this to remind us that, hey, she's a heel. And but they hadn't presented her that much that way on the main roster. Only people that watched her on NXT were familiar with that story arc for Tiffany Stratton. Yeah, that's why I was excited about what they did today, Denise, because that's one of my biggest pet peeves of what they do with the NXT talent is they build up people like Tiffany Stratton who get super over over there and then they bring them to the main roster and they don't talk about any of that that has like well why did you build them up for that and then either change their character or don't mention it at all it's like well you have the development for a reason and I think that they've been doing a great job post you know the last couple years of doing that and I thought with Tiffany Stratton they were just like here's Tiffany Stratton and letting her do her cool things and she was getting over but it's like there's one more element that's going to get her even more over if you bring in the NXT stuff so the promo today I think accomplished a lot do you think she'll have something at Wrestlemania because I mean them kind of showing her a week before and doing the video package that means something I would think right I think so. I think they have enough time to do it on SmackDown if they do like an impromptu situation. Uh, yeah, because next it week... Be they, something simple, right? They announced the Andre the Giant Battle Royal for next week. Maybe they'll do like a women's thing too. But I want to like... Remember, they need to get them on the show though. Do you remember if they did a pre-show last year with matches? Because they've been doing a lot of pre-shows but without matches. I can't remember. I don't remember if they had match pre-show matches on last week's, I mean, last year's WrestleMania kickoff. What do you put on the pre-show though, Denise? I mean, you could put a pre-show match, a singles match with Tiffany Stratton and I don't know, somebody else just to at least like get her a match at WrestleMania. It could work, but that's like a, I don't want to say a coveted spot, but like there's a lot of people that are going to want that. Of spot, course, you know? of course. They should. Of course. All right, let's see what we got here. We got, but I do definitely want to see Jade versus Tiffany at some point. And that one's going to be like the battle of perfection. That's going to hit really hard. We got MD89 who says, never thought I'd hear Denise say clapping cheeks. (laughs) Yeah, Denise. I recently learned the term and I wanted to use it at some point so I could sound hip. (laughs) I make note of this. I don't want to say where I heard this. (laughs) But I make notes of things like that now. Like whenever I hear someone say something that I think is funny, I'm like, oh, you're going to use that in a podcast somewhere. Yeah, it's podcast brain is really funny. Sometimes in the shower, I'm like, I'm going to say that for the pod. It's so silly. It's so pod dumb. Brain. <laughs> Bro, I'd be having a mess. I'm not even, not, you know what? I'm done. 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 Nope. Anytime you get to those almost close one, Denise, I'm like, something crazy is going to happen. But yeah, nope. let's just move on. D- Dream Ninja 77 says, Reg, we are not worthy to witness witness Jade perfection. My eyes, you guys. Every time I see her, I'm just like, what is this? This is crazy. Denise, what do you think her ceiling is? She's world champion. Is she the biggest? Is, can she be the number one woman in WWE? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say without mm-hmm. having seen her in any singles matches in WWE. Right. Until she has those singles matches, then I can say whether or not she'd be the top woman. Because we're just talking about Tiffany Stratton. Mm-hmm. And Tiffany Stratton also has a great look. Mm-hmm. Also has a great physique. She does. but when And she's also got a character down that's very, very popular too. She does. And can do a lot with it. The thing she has over Jade is the wrestling. And point blank. We're watching wrestling. People love wrestling. It's a big part of the game. Yeah, I mean, if it's like a match with Tiffany and somebody and a match with Jade or somebody, they're going to be two completely different matches. But Tiffany got it down a little bit more than Jade does. They're not going to use Jade like they would use Tiffany. So there's they're going to be in different trajectories. But they're like you said, they're competing for the same spot for sure. Yes, they are. And then it's so crazy to think to think that because I think like, do you feel Bianca and Jade are fighting for the same spot, too? Yeah, because Bianca's time isn't up like she still got years. She's still on top. She's still fighting to be that number one. And she Jade coming in is more competition for her. I think it's better for her because like you were describing here, 
Bianca's been on top for a while and she needs a little bit of change. Having Jade there on her ass doing all these things is going to inspire her to try to switch it all up. It's good. It's going to be great for Bianca, maybe more than anyone else at this point. Yeah, I think so, too, because I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, they're going to compete against each other. Of course, Bianca is also the stronger wrestler, too. But I think what Jade has, it's like it still counts for a whole lot. You can't look like that and not have it mean anything. None none of the women that we describe have aura like Jade, though. Like what she did tonight on SmackDown, none of them just like without doing a match have that. And that's big, especially for WWE. Denise, like she could be over everybody just off that. They could like, we don't care about when she gets in the ring. We don't care about any of that. Look at that reaction. Look how she looks. Look how she's presented. That could be worth more than anything. Right. And then let's also not forget some of the other people that they have on this roster. Uh, the number one being for the women, I would still say number one, Becky Lynch. And oh, oh my God, let's not forget Rhea Ripley. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the run that Becky's on right now, what she's doing with this book tour, she's showing that she's number one with the vengeance. And if she resigns or when she resigns, she's not giving up that top spot either for a couple of years, Denise. She's not ready to be take a backseat to anyone. No, and I feel like also Becky is very secure right now in who she is and her like who she is and what she can bring to the table because she's a legitimate draw and that's been like tested and proven. Like people are interested when Becky Lynch comes out. People don't change the channel when Becky Lynch comes out. And that within itself is is it's massive. It's huge. Yeah, Becky Lynch is not even in just the women's uh, discussion. She's in every discussion. Like, if we're talking about the main over wrestlers here, it's like you can name a handful of them, and Becky Lynch is in there. She is a number one discovery. They're going to throw 500 bags at her, Denise. They will not let her go anywhere. This is her company for the next couple years, and I can't see her stopping or doing anything or slowing down. Like, I feel like she's only going to go harder because we're getting stuff like Jade, because we have people like Tiffany Stratton coming up. And we haven't even described the great women they have down in NXT. Like, it's it's going to get tough up here, Denise. The competition is scary for the women right now. Honestly, yeah. like, I would be freaking like terrified. Terrified. It's great. It's great I time. think it's it's like the get in the gym, y'all. I think what you know, it's funny for the on AEW, it's the guys. I think where the competition is hot and heavy. I mean, but we, and we just talked about Mercedes, the women. though. Well, how the yeah, Mercedes, but Mercedes right room. now, Mercedes is way up here right now. There's still a lot of space between her and the next person. Yeah, it's not like that in, in WWE. I'll, a lot of them are like the same yes. level or like right underneath. It's 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 a different level of competition. Yes, and that's why I'm saying, like, for me, when I think of AEW, I think the men are more along those lines. And then on mm. the WWE side, I think about it for the women. I think the women are more like neck and neck. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? You think Rhea Ripley's beating Becky at WrestleMania? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think she has to. Yeah. We got Tunde Ud here who says, are they still doing Jade Bianca versus Damage Control? What about Naomi? Um, I think they're doing three on three, right? Someone said that they just announced the match officially. Oh, they online. did. Oh, yeah. let me go look right now. Let me go to, uh, oh, apparently I don't know how to search things. <laughs> I went to WB.com instead of Twitter. Learn yep. how to use the internet, Denise. I know. I'm so dumb. Let me see. Let me pull this up. Sorry, guys. I'm slow at the moment. Um, hold on. I don't see anything. Where did they announce this? Maybe Twitter? I am on Twitter. I don't see anything. Come on. Smackdown. Let me see. I'm reading. At- Fox News, not Fox News. <laughs> WWE, you know, Fox, Fox News. <laughs> That's a different kind of podcast, Reg. Way different. <laughs> oh, whatever. At some points, someone tagged me in it. Somebody's saying like, it's on Twitter. Denise can't see. She can't Man. search. She just said that. Oh, uh, Nick I Aldis. Mean, oh, Nick Aldis. I don't freaking follow Nick Aldis <laughs> on Twitter. Do I follow Nick Aldis on Twitter? Oh, I follow Nick Aldis on Twitter. You've interviewed Nick Aldis before, haven't you, Denise? Yeah, I've interviewed on, him. I'm dude. trying to see if he's uh, uh, where the hell? Why am I taking too long on this? You know what? I give up. I give up. Well, everybody's saying it's official. Whatever. I <laughs> trust just the can't find it. <laughs> I st- did. I finish reading that super chat. Okay, there you go. Well, mm. I guess that will answer your question. Um, we got Ice T here who says Jade Storm, Naomi Dazzler, and Bianca is Rouge. WWE is making them the X Men of wrestling. Disney gonna bitch to WWE about Jade using their IP. Yeah, it's not gonna go over as well as it did in AEW. Maybe it, I don't know. Who knows? Okay, someone tagged me. Thank you so much, Desi Baby, who tagged me here. 
It's a whole ass video. No wonder. I wasn't going to watch no video. Give me a whole, give me a graphic WWE. Damn. There's a video here of Adam Pierce and it says SmackDown GM Nick Aldis makes it official. Jade Cargill, Bianca, and Trinity will battle Asuka, Kyrie, and Dakota at WrestleMania. I'm a, I ain't even going to retweet this video. That's how mad I am. <laughs> I don't know why so, Denise I is so mad. I want to I'm so mad. Like, video. <laughs> Be be real, Reg. When you see something on online, <laughs> are you gonna? Is it, what's gonna grab your attention more, the graphic or the video? The graphic will come, Denise. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're making an announcement, it should be the graphic. <laughs> or a Denise little video is so with the mad about this video. Like, I'm not gonna watch a video. What do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I post a shit ton of videos. That's all you do is post videos. <laughs> All right, Roberto Cortez, thank you so much for becoming a brand new DWL member. We got Gerard. Yes, I got Jared. it right. No. Oh, that's Jared, not Gerard. <laughs> we have Gerard, and I've been practicing. Yep. God damn yep. it. And so finally, I would. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Jared says, I'm going to need Raw's women's division to fight back SmackDown and NXT, killing them. And then even AEW, that's how you know it's bad. Who would you draft to help them over on Raw? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like right now, it's like they're doing good on Raw, right? They got, they're doing good. They've been having those confrontations with Rhea and Becky. Becky and Nia had that last woman standing match. You know what I think it was, in all honesty? What it feels like kind of slowed down the Raw women's division. We got too much of Nia and Becky. Yeah, they kind of overloaded on Nia. I think that Nia is playing really great since they brought her back. I mean, they have the two biggest women in the on the roster we just talked about with uh, Becky and Rhea, so they're doing all right. It's just like they put too much focus on those two, and Rhea being entangled in Judgment Day stuff still kind of keeps her in a different thing. Like if she was like the head and all entangled in all women's division stuff, it will feel different. But since she's over there doing business, getting over as hell, it feels a little bit different. Yes. And on top of that, the women's tag team division is not that strong on Raw. And unfortunately, that's been bringing down, I would say. I think that's why Jared feels this way. Yeah, now nah, as soon as you said the women's tag team belts, I was like, oh yeah, that's why. That kind of what is it about those belts, Denise? They're just cursed. No, it's it's not even just the belts. It's like almost like the entire it's like all, all the it. matches. It's everything I would yeah. say right now. It's just everything it's not connected hitting. to it. As soon as they are like it's a women's tag match or a women's tag title tournament or anything, it's just something that just does not work. I don't know what it is. I don't know how they'll ever fix it. They have fun tag teams. They have fun matches, but I don't know what it is. Right. Ice-T here says, I really hope Jade can learn to work the three-on-three. It's a way to hide her lack of skill for now. She has the look. Man, I hope CM Punk is working with her. He is. I'm sure. I mean, Brian Danielson worked with her over on AEW. Yeah, I mean, I think she, I I think for what they're, how WWE is going to present her, she'll be fine. We got a super generous super chat here from Nick Grosso here who says, I like the main event angle, but I feel Dakota Kai needed the win more. She was out for nine months and is supposed to be the leader of damage control. I feel Dakota is underrated. And from now on, let's call her main event Coda. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say, you know, I get, I get what Nick Grosso means by saying Dakota is underrated because you know, she's got a lot of potential more than what we give her credit for. And I, you know, that's the thing. I think when sometimes when we're sitting here and we're talking about the big stars, which we were earlier, not at one point, did we mention Dakota Kai? She's got a lot of potential too. Of course. Yeah. I like, I like Dakota Kai a lot. I think she's a great promo. I think she's a really good wrestler. They're probably a little bit apprehensive with, you know, her injury history, but I think when like time happens and she gets established and she gets to like they kind of they got to get away from Bianca and Bailey uh, attached to the damage control because they're just that's all you could think of when they get away, start interacting with some other women. I think we'll really start to see what Dakota has. Yeah. And she brings something different, too. She's got a different vibe. Her interests are different. And so that's going to connect with a huge portion of the viewers because she's exactly. a gamer. She's got that gaming vibe. She's got all of that down and there's such a huge huge part of the wrestling community and the fans that are gamers and it's like dakota kai can you know really connect with those people with those audiences and she just seems like a really cool person so 
attach that to the streaming thing and she being a really good wrestler, like when she gets the opportunity to really shine, she's going to connect pretty big. Like she could be a really big over baby face if the opportunity presents itself. We got Jonathan Corona here who says Jade should have had should have Pyro at WrestleMania. Um, I agree. I think I love Pyro. I want Pyro all the time if it were up to me. I'm sure she will without much money. And they're saying this is the biggest WrestleMania ever. Yeah, there should be. Tim Dante says Bianca, Naomi, Jade equal the aura. Mm, that's good. Not bad. Not that's bad. Good. Not bad. Jonathan Corona also says the storm est glow for Jade, <laughs> Naomi, and Bianca. That's not bad either. Everybody with their names. So <laughs> I'm easy to please. So Matt Logan says Bailey EO was from the performance center. I'm great oh, stuff. That the performance center. On the performance center. Great mm-hmm. stuff. Ice T here says Jade was green as a bell pepper while she was with the A with AEW. Why are you two acting like she was? And Bianca Naomi went fully through the NXT system. We're not acting like she's not. Mm-mm. What I literally just said that the one thing she doesn't have in regards to Tiffany Stratton is that Tiffany Stratton is a better wrestler. Yeah. Same thing with Bianca Belair. So we literally talked about this right now. Yeah, she's. it is what it is. Ice-T also says Tiffany is levels above Jade in skill. We just said that! <laughs> <laughs> Are we, am I not using the right words? Yeah, when it, when it, when it comes to in-ring, she is. Not <laughs> levels, but she, you know, she, she can work better than In-ring, her. yes. Sheldon Jackson says, can we stop the final testament and the pride bullshit? Because this ain't helping no damn body. Cross and crew just go back to NXT for F's sakes because this is just horrible television. How do you Sheldon feel about Jackson. how do you feel about carrying cross, Denise? I don't feel anything. Yeah. I'm indifferent. I know. Yeah. I, I feel bad because that's like the part of the show where I'm like, oh, if that's on, let me look at Twitter. Let me see when what's ma- going on over there. They were having a really great tag match, and then they shot to carry and cross, and I was like, bro, I do not care. So shoot back to the tag match. <laughs> I feel bad because this was supposed to be, like, the thing for him. Remember how mm-hmm. excited everyone was? Yeah. And you He's know had what? a few of those times where people were like, oh, it's going to be carry and cross this time. He's getting these big moments, and then it's like, uh, no, You know it? what, Reg? I'm mad. And you know what? I know why I'm mad. Because I feel that – Mob mentality got mm. to me with this whole Final Testament thing. You want to know yeah. why? When the Final Testament was presented, my initial reaction was, oh. And then everybody was like hyping it up on social media. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I'm not seeing things the way that it should be seen. And then I got like fake excited, I feel, about this. And so I feel like I was part of this mob mentality of thinking this was going to be good. And then all of a sudden, every week it was like, oh, I'm not reacting to this. Yeah, it's uh, it's like when you know something's not going to work. It's, it wasn't working. Then you're like, this is not going to work either. That's kind of how I felt about the whole thing. Like they started putting this group together. And I'm like, nobody's going to care about this group. And still, I don't think anybody cares about this group. Does anybody care about this group? I'm sure there's going to be a couple people in here that care about the group. Mm. There always is. There always is. Which is fine, and I want to care. That's the thing, I want to care. But at this point, it's not only do I not care about them, I've stopped caring about the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley. Ooh, that's a tough one, that's a tough one. I think it's just because they're attached to this and you're like, oh, they're still on this, who cares about this? Uh, I have a question about that match too. Didn't the Street Profits get a new theme song a few weeks ago? I think they, they went- did. What happened to that? They didn't care. I don't know. I don't know. They don't care about Street Profits either, Denise. No, I don't know what's going on right now, but man. We got Jonathan Corona here who says it is officially the women's six tag match is announced. Bianca Jade and Naomi versus Damage Control WB just announced. Thank you so much to Jonathan Corona. I appreciate that a whole lot. Uh, Tunde Yud here who says for 2K game, which female deserves a cover next? Becky's already had one, right? Has she? I'm not a big gamer, so I tend to forget a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But I don't I feel like I would remember if she was. Right? She had to have had one. Like how she had when she had one night. She's the man. I don't know. Well, there you go. There's your answer. John know. Harris here says Jade versus um versus um Jade Brandy. versus Bianca. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a second. Jade versus Bianca at WrestleMania 41. Oh, Brandy, Brandy Rhodes. <laughs> No, we're not talking about Brandy Rhodes. That's what no, the oh, he chat. really meant Brandy Rhodes? I thought he like spelled the words and it auto-corrected. 
<laughs> no, he's talking about one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time. You thought this is open mic night, bitch. Brandy Rhodes. I thought John mistakenly wrote Brandy and meant Bianca. Nope. <laughs> he meant the queen of this shit. The Rock is scared. Bianca, Jade, all of them are scared. Like, if at the end of the show, Brandy Rhodes walked out and stood at the top of the Titan Tron, all the three of those women would have been like, yo, this is crazy. I'm not going out there. Oh, so thank you so much, Sean Davis. She had a co cover with Roman Reigns, uh, Becky Lynch. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you so much. See, I told you, we got gamers here. It's a little huge part of the wrestling community. Mm -hmm. All right, Dream Ninja 77 says, Karen Cross been dead since Cole murdered him on NXT. <sighs> he hasn't recovered, honestly. No, you know what happened? You know what it was? It was the damn freaking, like, remember that horrible getup they had him on Raw with the mask and the suspenders? Then he had the Jeff Hardy match. It was all over. That's what got him right there. Yeah, he never recovered from that. And nope. I don't know if he ever will. Nope. And God, whatever. Honestly, I didn't really like the the how they were booking him in NXT. Remember they had him like squash everybody. They had him squash. Uh, I did like Wade. what they were. I liked what he was doing on NXT. I thought on NXT they made him feel like a big deal. Like I still to this day remember the stare down with him and Samoa Joe. I was really into that. And it just sucked that at the exact same time that he was doing this really great stuff on NXT, that at the exact same time they were having him do this horrible stuff on Raw. The problem is, is they, they did that classic booking of he came in and squashed a bunch of guys. And then what happens when you wrestle guys that you can't squash? Nobody cares. All right, we got Mr. Twilly here who sends in a very generous super chat saying we could have had Tiffany versus Bianca and Jade Naomi versus Kabuki Warriors at WrestleMania, but they had to add Final Testament versus Lashley and Street Profits to it and instead. I forgot they added this match. I, like it's I official. Mean, that's what they've been building to, so it would make sense. I mean, I figured as much. It's two nights of WrestleMania, Denise. They got to fill some time. All right, this is going to be the part where I run to get some nachos at WrestleMania. <laughs> Nacho break. Nacho break. <laughs> they have to have one. Yeah, there it is. All right, we got Jay Stone here who says Bobby and the Street Profits need to pack it up, get Bobby back in the main event scene, and get Tez free. I know, they need to have him be a single star. Uh, Jay Stone also says Cross T's Tez should leave them a few weeks ago. Um, I think a lot of us have been sort of waiting to see Montez like blow up and really have – it's real, at least give it a go. At least see, test the waters, you know? Yeah, there was a time, Denise, where they were doing this teasing of the Street Profits breaking up. And I was like, never, don't even do it. This is a couple years ago. And then they did like a draft thing. And I was like, this is it. They're going to finally launch Montez. And then they never launched him. They need to get to it. It's about that time. And with Lashley, they're, ra they're wasting precious time. They're wasting precious Bobby Lashley still looks like he does still works like he does still pretty much is in the prime of his career and they're not using him as a main event star they got to do something with them they can't have him being a cheerleader for this group that he's in it just doesn't make sense for who he is no and it started off cool they were out there wearing the suits they yeah. were looking all suave Bobby Lashley was giving them a makeover then what happened nothing Exactly. Nothing happened. Uh, Jay Stone, thank you so much for the super chat. All right, let's get into some of these other topics that occurred here on the show. Um, we got Kevin Owens and Randy Orton versus Pretty Deadly uh, after this match. Well, unfortunately, Logan Paul cost this match for both KO and Randy Orton. He came out when Randy wasn't looking and referee wasn't looking and hits KO with the brass snucks. This allows Pretty Deadly to get the win. I love that they showed the replay and that Randy Orton saw the replay because usually it's like if wrestlers, it's like wrestlers and referees apparently are blind whenever replays come out, right? Yep. And so Randy sees this replay, realizes Logan Paul still may be underneath that ring, goes and goes there, drags his ass out of there, and this all leads to him chasing him off and he leaves in his fancy red car. Yeah, this was, I thought this was pretty fun. The, um, that exact thing there, Denise. It's like when something happens and the referee had their back turned, it's like they walk out backwards to the back so they don't see the, the, the video. Like, watch the video, dude. We're all seeing that you made a mistake here. But Randy Orton being like, oh, I see it. Is he under there? And using the crowd, Randy Orton is at that stage where he's still super over. Everybody loves him. He could do things like this of like, pointing to the ring and finding Logan Paul and beating him up, beating him up and all that. Thought it was super fun stuff. 
uh, Kevin Owens on WrestleMania. That's all I care about. How? What's your interest level for this triple threat match, Denise? Honestly, I'm interested. I'm interested because I know that they're all good. And I know that Logan yeah. Paul, like he hasn't had a match yet. Uh, maybe aside from that one miss, random mismatch that we got. Aside mm. from that match, all of Logan Paul's matches have been good. Yeah, and I'm excited because Kevin Owens is in it and he'll always do something wild. And uh, Logan Paul's kind of built up this thing of doing something crazy too. So it should be pretty interesting uh, moment happening happening here on the show. You know, I actually thought we were going to get another backstage beatdown tonight on SmackDown when Randy Orton was chasing down Logan Paul. Me I was too. so bummed out when he got in his car and left. I was like, come <laughs> on, yo. I thought some crazy thing was going to happen. That was kind of funny, though, him riding out with his arm out of the car. I was like, yeah, okay. I'm not mad at it. Because <laughs> it, it plays into uh, to Logan Paul's character. Really good shot on Kevin Owens first with the brass knuckles. But, like, for his character, he can't be getting caught up and getting beat up by these two guys. He has to run. He has to get away. That plays more into the heel things that he does. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got two more things to talk about, and that is the AJ Styles promo. And basically, this was AJ coming out saying that, he uh, wants to expose LA Knight. He tells, tells him that he's overachieving, under talented, and that he's a piece of shit and all of this, <laughs> right? And LA Knight, <laughs> that's what he said, Reg. <laughs> LA Knight is there masquerading as a WWE employee, and he attacks AJ Styles, and eventually AJ runs away, and LA Knight's like, you better run and hide. <laughs> I liked this. This was cool. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, no, uh, piece of shit. Styles is really mad, Denise. He is like just so angry at LA Knight. He just chapping his gears all crazily. Um, I just am have interest in this match. I think it's going to be really good for us, man. And glad that these two are getting a one on one match. LA Knight throughout the year stayed consistently over, so he really earned a spot like this. They're just like spinning the wheels, kind of trying to book this going into the show. Like, what kind of wacky things can we get into coming into the show? inoffensive stuff I, they're keeping them both on the screen and hot uh, interesting stuff yeah it's fine it's fine i'm digging it i'm, I'm looking forward to it mm -hmm. all right we got one last thing to get into and that is the tag team stuff so i'm gonna kind of throw this all in together so we were talking about the street profits uh they took on a town down austin theory and grayson waller and basically i mean that led to the whole thing with freaking what are they the final testament mm -hmm. and basically screwed the street profits over and so a town down they continue on they're going to wrestlemania and they're added to the six-pack challenge yep. then the other spot was filled by the new catch republic and this was um this was pretty fun actually we got legado del fantasma versus the new catch republic they ended up winning and then uh, was it before or was it after no it was before where we got the santos promo the mm -hmm. confrontation uh lwo and legado brawling with each other zelina slapped electra they're gonna have a match next week dragon lee's officially part of the lwo which i personally thought he already was same right so anyways those were the two things um what did you think of either of these matches I like both of these tag matches a lot. The uh, Legato and um, Catch Republic. I hate that new Catch Republic name. I'll never get used to it. It's too long. It's so long and so contrived and stupid. We but can't I, read. Yeah, we can't read. What do you think this is? I thought the match was awesome, though. All those guys worked really well together. I thought that for a second, it, Rey Mysterio was going to announce that Andrade was going to be his partner. But I do like Dragon Lee, and I think the match is going to be awesome. Dom still has that crazy heat where he can't talk. Santos looked to crazy dope in his outfit and everything really great stuff both of the tag matches are fun i'm looking forward to this uh ladder match because the tag matches have shown me that everybody's going to go in here and go wild they need to split up those tag belts still i don't know if they ever will just doesn't make sense but i thought that the tournament as a whole established a lot for the teams and established that, that we're going to get a pretty good match at the show we got Ice T he 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 here who says who what will be the blown quads moment of WrestleMania 40? Can we create an award for it and name it after Shane? Are Shane and Steph never to be uh, mentioned again? I'm not gonna lie, I have I have that clip of Shane tearing his <laughs> in that spot at WrestleMania 39. I have that thing saved on my phone. <laughs> Seriously, where it's like something we're not supposed to laugh at, but Shane McMahon break dancing like gets me good, dude. <laughs> like he still got it and then at the exact moment it was like boom <laughs> he still got it like no he does not 
Oh, Hopefully nothing. We don't want anybody to get injured like no, that. So hopefully no. they don't have a no. moment like that this it year. It was just funny. But damn. <laughs> It's, it's one of those things, right? It was just yeah. like an unfortunate moment that was funny. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not funny that he got hurt, but the bot, like the botch itself was kind of funny. It was. <laughs> oh, man. All right. We got Juan Castle here who says, Red, Strickland versus Bear, Cat, Lashley, hardcore match. Me and me and Swerve versus uh, Bear, Cat, and Lashley, a hardcore match. <sighs> I'd pay to see that. Would you? Who would win? I think I could take. I could not take Keith Lee or Bobby Lashley. They both tear me in half. Um, <laughs> I could beat up the referee probably in the match. I don't know, man. The referees have some training, bro. <laughs> Denise has no faith in me. She's like, no, nah, you can't do that either. <laughs> nope. Uh, Whatever, on castle thank you so much for the super chat we have a super chat here by the way that i didn't get to read on wednesday's show uh because they came out afterwards so i want to make sure to give it some time uh this is from crazy 101 <laughs> who says no rampage this week denise see you in six months <laughs> and if you saw the card for rampage denise you'd be like oh dude. what the hell is the card for rampage you don't want to oh, it's bad i mean it's not bad but like hold on let me ask you a question is it bad for all viewers or bad for just viewers like me or bad for viewers like you bad for viewers like you like i'm a sicko I'm, it's some good wrestling on there but like you would be like what is this okay yeah i'm a little insulted by that reg <laughs> you're, basically, you're basically saying oh this card is too sophisticated for you <laughs> wrestling sophisticator asking. sophisticators like me <laughs> i would put my pinky up while i watched rampage yeah you wouldn't pinky, know denise pinky up freaking monocle some you would Wilson never Bar. know about this is just rampage baby <laughs> <laughs> oh man someone said oh dustin versus butcher okay you're not gonna don't stop saying okay like you care about that okay you would not watch that in five million years <laughs> You don't know that. You don't know that. I do know that. I well, think you I don't do. know that. Guaranteed. I'm going to. Oh, wait. That was today. Wait, exactly. Are we talking about today's card or next it's week? It's on today. Yeah, no, it's today. It's happening oh, right shit. now. Oh, well, too bad. I already missed it. If not, oh, I would have tuned in. You can catch the West Coast version at 10 o'clock. I'm asleep already at 10 o'clock. Yeah, there we go. I bet. You see, this is just like I missed out. Had, had I known in advance. <laughs> Excuses, excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Had I known in advance. <laughs> Rampage is on every week at the same time. <laughs> it never changes. <laughs> I'm just not touching it, but it hasn't changed for a long time. <laughs> Had I had known, I mean, I would have been there. <laughs> oh, man, I'm dying. All oh, right, good. man. That is it for our show today, guys. I hope you had a good time. Um, before we go, I do want to give a shout out because as I mentioned before, if you leave a review on Apple Pods or on Spotify, I do take the time to read them here on the show as a thank you. And we got a brand new one. Yay. Um, we got Leia's dad here who says best post shows. It's the most frustrating thing ever when you don't have any real life friends that like pro wrestling. And when your girlfriend loses attraction to you, the more you talk about it. Yeah. So it's great to be able to tune into Denise's post show and have her break down every match and segment. A lot of other podcasts just talked about the main stories. Keep up the great work, Denise. Man, thank you so much, man. And you know, hey. I was thinking about this the other been day. Been there, Reg. been there of losing interest talking to a partner. Like, why aren't you talking about wrestling again, dude? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't know anything else. <laughs> I get it. If you're not interested, it's like, yeah. shut up. Right. But it's so much. And that's the best, Denise, when I'm like, oh, I'm doing in podcast. They're like, you could talk about wrestling again. I'm like, it never ends. Like, there's always, there'll never not be something to talk about. That is true. But I was thinking about this the other day, though. Honestly, I wanted the chat to chime in on this one. How many of you legitimately have in real life friends that watch pro wrestling and can actually talk about it with them? Because I feel it's all online friends. Yeah, every I'm, I was going to name a bunch, but I met them all online, though. Exactly. Yeah. I, they're, they're all online. Yeah. Same it. thing for me. It's wild. Nobody, I mean, because people don't like wrestling in real life. It's just us. <laughs> It's just us. We all wrestling's just... cool again. No, it's not. Like ten people like wrestling. You guys relax. <laughs> we all just found each other randomly. Just okay, us. Dan. We got Dan Jackson here. He says he has a handful. Okay, you must be really social, Dan. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Everybody we got some people. Like, nah, I don't know nobody. Delayed Gratz here says used to be a couple, but not anymore. We got Desi Baby who says none. Peachy Bo says two coworkers and a friend. That's what it was for me. Like, there's a bunch that used to, but they all just stopped liking wrestling. See, some people, it's just like their their relatives. Yeah, see, like mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't know anybody that watched wrestling. I mean, besides my uncle, but that. Like, it's not like a friend that you, like, hang out with and talk about the shows and stuff, you know? Totally. Like, hey, let's go out to dinner and talk about SmackDown. Yeah, that doesn't really... (laughs) That doesn't happen. (laughs) No, it does not. (laughs) You don't have any... uh, Let's. You don't have a... a, You and your husband go out with another couple and you guys are like, man, that New Japan show last night was No, absolutely not. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Nope. Nope. The only time... Did you see what Tanahashi did? He killed it. Yeah, no, never, never. The only time that we get to talk about wrestling with other people, it's literally whenever you guys come over that's or it. we see each other at a show. If not, it's like, oh, well, that's it. All right, we got a super chat here from Ice T. He, he says some people dogging wrestling or dodging. Some people dogging or dodging wrestling. I think dogging. Dogging? Mm-hmm. Watch and talk about novellas, reality shows. Come on yep. now, stop the hypocrisy. Wrestling is the same damn thing. That's true. Not even Lame. just like uh, soap operas, but like Marvel movies, the Zeus Network, BT, and like all of it's all about drama and bullshit and entertainment. Yeah, but apparently movies are real, TV shows are real. Taken was different. Liam Neeson's was really after those people, Denise. Hey, don't ruin it for me, man. I love that movie. <laughs> How did it happen three times, Denise? Three times they taken somebody from Liam Neeson's. Did you watch all three? No. Okay, well, I watched all three, and the story the came together. Time, I'm like, why are they taking somebody again from Liam Neeson's? What? Well, you have to watch all three. They all explain it. It's fun. It's good. It all connects. <laughs> Liam Neeson's. I'm gonna check it out. I like. I like. I watch all his movies. Honestly, my grandma used to have yeah. a crush on him, or she oh, might Liam still. Neeson. I don't know. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Yeah, he's got it going on. You know, he's for like, like an older dude. Oh he's yeah, like 89 years old, Denise. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. I don't think so. Mm. anyways that's our show everybody reg and i will be back here on saturday tomorrow to talk about aew collision it'll be a really good time and then of course next week is wrestlemania week so be here i got monday's raw watch along tuesday nxt post show wednesday reg and i will be here and then also wednesday morning i'm going to be doing a wrestlemania prediction show with luke owen of wrestle talk that is right team the nuke will be returning and then after that it's just going to be wrestle your content non-stop have a great weekend everybody we'll catch you guys later bye